Skateboarding is the topic of this ep of Casting 495 Celebrities Worldwide C4CW. Thank you for tuning in to yet another ep. Because like I said, for the rest of the week, I'm going to be using ep as opposed to the longer version. So, yo, check it out. Skateboarding. Mike C brought it to my attention. Today, he reminded me. He said, Growth, do you recall our conversation about day one? And I was like, day one? And he's like, yeah, the skateboarder from L.A. He's a skateboarder from L.A. And I was like, huh? And I was like, I genuinely did not recall the conversation. But strangely, in that convo, the more he started to talk about it, I was like, where have I heard that name before? By the way, thank you for tuning in to Casting 495 Celebrities Worldwide, C4CW. If you are a fan of the show, if you support and appreciate this show, I, that is yours truly, One Sir Grove, O-H-G-O-E, a.k.a. Big Grove Dog, a.k.a. Grove VD, a.k.a. Alpha Analytical Grove Numeric X-Man. I, we, 495, larger organization, appreciate you. Yeah, day one. So, I was a skateboarder, rebel skateboarder. I rebelled against the system and was like, fuck it, I'm going to skate hard. My parents were both military. My dad was never around. He was never the fuck around. My mom's, she dated dudes that weren't my dad. My mom and dad were never married. I didn't get along with some of the dudes she dated. They were military. She was military. My, my household wasn't some normal shit. So at a very young age, I got a skateboard and I was like, fuck it, I'm a rebel. So I took to the streets. I would stay at flop houses. I would fucking stay out all night. You know what I'm saying? I would skate in the fucking city when I was a kid, just fucking skateboarding, being truant. I'd be out late, like all night sometimes, and I'd just be fucking skating just like all day, all night from sun up to sun down and then some. So I joined up with this skate gang called Skaters Defacing Public Property, SDPP. And, uh, man, back then, skating was considered a fucking crime. And so our whole mantra was skating is not a crime. Fuck the police and fuck the system that's corrupt, right? So we'd wear, like, anarchy symbols and shit. We weren't really anarchists, but you know what I'm saying? We were kids, man. We were teenagers, and we were fucking young rebels, man. And uh, so anyway... I became a semi-professional skateboarder at some point. I was sponsored. Uh, and I've talked about this in podcasts. So back in the day, I knew of Rodney Mullen, you know what I'm saying, and Ray Barbie, and the different skateboarders at the time, Tony Hawk, obviously, right? All the big names that were around at the time. So any skate, any skate company, any skate deck, you know what I'm saying? Like any skater pro at the time, like their names were, were, you know, ever present. So I found out today from Mike C, he was like, bro, day one, like the Korean American skateboarder from LA. And I was like, man, what the fuck? hold on. So I go online and I, and I bring up his information and it comes up immediately. And I'm like, damn, how, how could I have not had this in my memory? Like, like it was, it's, it was such a vague memory. And I was like, like racking my brain, like trying to like recall, like, wait, hold on day one. So yo, he and I talked at length about day one and as I'm talking to him, that is Mike C, the homie Mike C, I'm reading news articles and the Wikipedia on day one, and I'm like, man, it's coming back to me, right? So, day one has been considered one of the top skateboarders in the world, worldwide. I read today, uh, here I'm going to bring up the information, and I'm going to share with y'all, uh, with y'all what I what I learned here today. So, if you Google, if you Google Day One, uh, some would say Dewan. Um, it says that he was born. It says right here, Celebrities Net Worth, 
It says he's born in Seoul, South Korea, uh, 19 February, 1975. And uh, net worth, I don't know if that's accurate, so I'm not even going to cite that or quote that because who knows what that number actually is. But I'm assuming that he's a, he's a millionaire based on this information, if it is in any way accurate. Um, he is uh, Wikipedia says his profession, his professional occupation, that is, his occupation, it's a little redundant, you know, professional occupation, I mean, it's his occupation, it's his profession, nonetheless, he's a professional, uh, it says skateboarder, and there is a video that I am currently watching here, I have it open, I actually just started it, and it is called Dewan Documentary Trans World Skateboarding Shows Trans World currently with 330,000 subscribers. Trans World when I was a kid was fucking huge. Um, Trans World and Thrasher. Um, It says right here, published on 17 May 2019. Dewan is a documentary covering career. Quote, Dewan is a documentary covering career highlights and uncertain life moments throughout the 30-year career of legendary skateboarder Dewan Song, a film by Joe Pease, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, P-E-A-S-E, in association with Adidas Skateboarding. I can tell you, man, I paused it at 8 minutes, 49 seconds, because I was so fucking inspired. Man, the world of skateboarding is huge, and now that we're in this world of hip-hop, rap, and urban music where it's come to this level of like trap music we need to revisit the world of skateboarding man and we need to talk about how big skateboarding was a lot of people man they 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 okay so look my generation generation x we obviously know how big skateboarding was skateboarding is part of hip-hop culture man it really is some people have referred to it as a subculture a counterculture I remember when I was a kid, man, skateboarding, if you were a skateboarder, you were considered like a social outcast. You were considered like a degenerate, man. Like you were fucking up your life by skateboarding according to like society and the system. Like you were ostracized by society. They were like, oh, you're a fucking skater. What a fucking scrub. And it's like, really, motherfucker? Like, just because, like, I'm smart enough to know that your system is fucking broken and it's fucked up, right? So what? I'm doing something that I enjoy, okay? Like, I'm just being, like, creative and expressing myself. And plus, it's athletic and it's fucking fun to skate. So you hate me because of that? You're a fucking piece of shit. So that's who I associated with, man. Skaters, skateboarders, kids that rode fucking BMX bikes. I had a BMX bike, too. As a kid. So the kids in my neighborhood that skateboarded, man, in my city, in my town, man, we banded together. And that was our world. That was our universe. That was our microcosm, our little bubble that we lived in. So we looked up to and idolized different skateboarders, such as the aforementioned. And people nowadays, younger members of society who they ride these long boards and these different like motorized skateboards and like hoverboards and this kind of stuff. I really don't think a lot of them, most of them understand. I mean, unless they watch the videos, unless they watch the documentaries, I'm not just talking about dudes doing tricks. Okay. I'm not just talking about like you go on YouTube and it's like skateboard tricks. Okay. Or you play a video game where it's like Tony Hawk, you know what I'm saying? And it's like extreme sports where it's like video games, like, you know, like immersive world environment. And it's like, okay, man, I'm learning about skateboarding from like playing a video game. Yeah, that's part of it. You can do that. But the documentary evidence and, and recordation archives of, of what took place, what transpired is, is, is also, man, paramount. It's, it's absolutely fucking crucial and important to understanding the whole phenomenon of skateboarding. Skateboarding, man, predates my era okay the dog dogtown boys like straight up like let's let's take a look at that man let's 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 explore the past 
and let's look up some of these different historic moments, times, milestones, eras of skateboarding. Give me one moment because this is on the fly. Here we go. We can get this Google shit to cooperate. Dogtown boys. Here is some information about Dogtown and Z Boys. All right. Dogtown and Z Boys movie. Here is some information about Dogtown and Z Boys. What is the Dogtown and Z Boys movie about? Here is some information about Dogtown and Z Boys. Jesus fucking Christ. Dogtown and Z Boys explained. All right, it says, according to IMDb, <clears throat> just a scholarly citation here. Oh, what the fuck, man? I didn't press that shit, dude. Now it's going here to this. All right, so it says, quote, uh, this is IMDb, just scholarly citation here. Quote, in the mid-1970s, surfers from Venice Dash, that is Santa Monica, who hung out at the Zephyr Surf Shop with skateboard. When the surf was quiet. All right, so so that's IMDb, just proper citation, going to Wikipedia, checking out Creative Commons. It says a documentary film directly by Stacy Peralta. Big name, big name, man. Powell Peralta in the 1980s. We'll get to that. The documentary explores the pioneering of the Zephyr skateboard team in the 1970s, of which Peralta was a member and the evolving sport of skateboarding, using a mix of film of the Zephyr skateboard team, Z-Boys, that is, shot in the 1970s by Craig Steck. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, along with the contemporary, along with contemporary interviews. Hold on, let me pull my car forward here. This is a mobile podcast. I am uh, multitasking. The documentary tells the story of a group of teenage surfers, skaters, and their influence on the history of skateboarding and, to a lesser extent, surfing culture. All right, so that's a big deal right there, man. And uh, let's look up, and by the way, that was 2001. Looks like they had a budget of 400 grand. It's 91 minutes. Uh, country, obviously, United States. Let's look up Pal Peralta. Let's, let's explore the history of skateboarding. Pal Peralta. All right. American Skateboard Company founded by George Powell and Stacy Peralta in 1978. Top skateboarders. What are we looking at here? All right. So, ooh, Dragon Complete Skateboard. You see, man, this whole world of skateboarding has, has evolved. And you see these... Uh, you see these kids nowadays, I call them kids, young adults, youngsters, and they're, they have these long boards and these skateboards that have computer based, you know, they're, they have computer embedded, uh, systems and they, they can, uh, you know, you can drive the skateboard with a motor motorized system. These skateboards have been augmented and you see kids just like zipping and zooming down the streets. Well, that's cool. And I actually, man, I'm all for that technology, man. I'm a proponent of it. I think it's fucking neat. I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome and, and very cool to say the least, man, um, how, how far we've come in terms of skateboarding and, and, and the skateboarding, you know, world and universe. Thinking back, man, to when I was a kid, when I was like 13 years old, 12, 13 years old, uh, having my, you know, first like, you know, real professional skateboards. I'm talking about not like, like shitty skateboards when I was about 12, 13 years old, man. I mean, I had decks that I would trade since I was even younger than that, but like, like pro pro shit where I was like building my own decks because, you know, I had access to like a skate shop, you know what I'm saying, getting discounts, good deals, had sponsorship and I could actually get like fucking pro like, like, you know, parts. Um, man, see, you know, like seeing the stuff now because we didn't have the internet. So, you know, and I say that quite a bit. But the point is, is like, we didn't really, we couldn't really envision what is now, I mean, 100%. You know, there was Back to the Future, the movie, and it was like, all right, in the future, skateboards are going to fly. But it's like, 
motorized decks and stuff like that. I mean, we talked about it like, man, if you could put a motor on this, you know, but it was like, it wasn't even about that back then. It was like about like, you know, not having a motor on skateboards. So let me see. Let's do this. Famous skateboarders. All right. Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen. I'm just going to give you the names of those who I remember. Um, let's see. They talk about Ryan Sheckler. I don't, I'm not familiar. Okay. Tony Alva. I am. Uh, let me see. So, so, oh, there's Danny way. So back when I was a kid, because when I skate and people see me skate, they're like, dude, you can fucking skate. You know, they, they say I'm an old school skater. So as an old school skater, the names, obviously I remember Tony Hawk. I mean, you know, come on, man, Tony Hawk, like who, who could forget Tony Hawk's name? Obviously Rodney Mullen, um, Tony Alva, absolutely Alva, absolutely Danny way. Uh, let me see here. Mike, Mike Valley, 100% Mike Valley, Stacy Peralta. I already said that, um, Ray Barbie, black skateboarder. Don't know why his name isn't up here. It fucking should be. Uh, I've talked about the search for the animal chin. Search for the animal. I'm sorry. Search for animal chin. Let's let's look that up because a lot of people don't even know what the fuck that is. And during my childhood, when I was a skateboarder and later semi-professional skateboarder, search for animal chin became fucking huge. Let's check it out. Search for animal chin. You probably like growth. Here's some information about the search for animal chin. Skateboarders known as the Bones Brigade show off their various talents during the search for their sports legendary founder. Yo, 1987. Ha <laughs> ha! 1980 fucking seven! One hour, 15 minutes. All right, let's check out the cast. Let's check out, let's check out the cast here, man. Tony Hawk, Steve Cabarello. Dude. Big names. Lance Mountain. Mike McGill. Tommy Guerrero, Rodney Mullen, yo, Mike Valley, okay, fucking these, these cats, man, from this time period, the, man, look at this, look at this shit, you guys need to go back, man, and check out the search for Animal Chin, because, hold up, because that shit was live, that shit was lit, by the way, Bones, in terms of, uh, Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, so it says right here, The Search for Animal Chin is a 1987, this is a Wikipedia, film featuring Bones Brigade. She said that. The computer did. It is one of the first skateboarding films that have a plot. You see, that's what made it significant. Um, rather than simply a collection of skateboarding stunts and music videos. Now, at the time, 1987, man, we're not talking about DVDs. We're talking about VHS cassettes. I... And I remember there were like, I can't remember how many there were. There were, I thought, um, many, many different like sequels to this. Hold on, hold on. About to uh, kind of just like maneuver right here. Hold up, let me pull over real quick. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. All right. Search for Animal Chin. Let's investigate. Let's explore. Let's check this shit out. So... It says music by Dennis Dragon here. Let's get to the gist of it. Let's look at the plot summary. So it says the Bones Brigade travels around California, Nevada, and Hawaii. I, And then it says that uh, it says to different skate spots in search of a wizened old man. Wonton animal chin. The movie is of the old school nomadic skate everything in your path genre with interludes of stopping to rip up a big ramp, pool, or kicker. After much searching and skateboarding, they locate a large ramp in the desert. They also find a Chinese character on the inside of the ramp spine. See, man, like how it says right there, as I just read, the movie is of the old school nomadic skate everything in your path genre. That's how we used to fucking skate. Okay? You would just get up in the morning, get your deck, get a little bite to eat, man. If that, you fucking make sure you had some money and shit because you're going to play some video games at some different places that you go to. You're going to get you some Slurpees and shit from 7-Eleven. You know what I'm saying? Some beef jerky, some Doritos and shit. 
Shout outs to 7 Eleven. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, you would just be skating all fucking day long and you would be looking for other skaters and you would be, like they said, nomadic, man. It's like the Metallica song, Wherever I May Roam. Okay. You would just skate all day and you would skate hard and it was nonstop. You would literally learn what in your environment you could skate and what you couldn't skate. You would try to skate everything. If it was the side of a building that was vertical, man, you would try to skate it. Depending on the texture of that building, you might just like, you know what I'm saying? You might just try to skate it like anyway, depending on, you know what I mean? Like you might be like, huh, that looks kind of rough, that surface. And I don't think that I could like actually roll like on that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to try to skate it anyway. Like you would, man, you would like do acid drops off of rooftops, like cars like you know what i mean park benches it was it was a lot like it's like man it was very it was very acrobatic okay and it was very almost militaristic in nature it was like military re- regimented it was like you were kind of like with the militia man and you're just like in your environment and you're just like learning what you can like what you can you know what i mean like you're learning the elements is what I'm saying. And you're outside, hell, rain, sleet, snow, you know, you're, you're outdoors all day and all night. So if it's snowing, you're going to try to skate in the snow. I mean, it sounds crazy, but to be a street skater, you had to understand like what you could get away with and you know, like how extreme, like you, you could be and like where you could take it. Like, in the elements wise, like in, in the natural environment, you're like, yo, can I skate on ice? You know, with my skateboard, like, man, if I'm going to be out here in the streets, man, and all I got is my deck, I'm going to have to learn how to skate on the snow and ice, man. And so, um, yeah, it was really interesting in that way. And then we're going to look at, um, going to look at, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's take a look at a, Related topic here. Give me one moment. Uno momento. All right. So here we go. Boom. Come on, computer. Parkour. Here we go, computer. Pronounce it. Parkour. Say it again, computer. Parkour. Okay, how is it pronounced? Parkour. Parkour. Say it one more time, computer. Parkour. Parkour. All right. So there it is. Parkour. 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 Now let's define it. Meaning. All right. So it says here, noun, the activity or sport of moving rapidly through an area, typically an urban environment, negotiating obstacles by running, jumping, and climbing. So skateboarding involves some degree, some, some, some parkour. Because that's what I was doing. That's what we were doing. Really, to put it into perspective, we were we were skateboarding and parkouring. We we really truly were. And people at the time may not have like known that or understood that, and we didn't use that term, but that is exactly what we were doing. We were doing parkour with skateboards. So I want for y'all, because this has been 23 minutes, we'll keep it at under 25, I want for y'all to go and watch Day One Song's videos, Day One Song's videos, I said Dewan Song, depending on how you want to pronounce it, check out his videos, man, amazing history, amazing history, shout outs to Mike C for pointing out the history the recall of Dewan Song. Shout outs to Dewan. To Dewan. Big, big, super, ultra shout outs to Dewan Song. And uh, yeah, man, it's an, apart, it's an important part of American history. It really is, man. Skateboarding as a whole. And, and all of the names that I mentioned, man, because that was a large part of my childhood. And the further significance of it is that we used to be social outcasts, but then... We became embraced. We were later embraced because skateboarding was later accepted and we were no longer antisocial. We became kind of like 
heroes a little bit 